Dude, Are you dude. sure it's not episodic? Nah, I'm sodic. On your whiteboard! Please tell me what is... Every time I have to consciously remember something, what type of memories are those called? Anytime I have to purposely remember something, what do we call them? No. What type of memories? Good. Good. What are they? Yeah. Declarative or explicit, either or. Okay, On your you whiteboard, right please tell me what are visual memories called? Visual memories. Good. What are they? Olivia. Iconic. On your whiteboard, what are sound memories called? Sad. Sound. Oh. What are they, John? Am I saying John wrong too? Are you going to add yourself to the list, John? How, how is it episodic? Like, John. When you watch, John. Like, like when you watch a TV show, do you watch an episode? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Google it, man. I don't really know. <laughs> what is it called when you say your vocab over and over and over again in your head right before the vocab quiz, and then Jacqueline does poorly on her vocab quiz? <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but... Frankly, I don't like this Jacqueline character. Sam! Maintenance rehearsal. Your social security is done this way. Your telephone is done this way. It makes it easy to call. Jenny! Chunky. Chunky, you didn't watch my video yesterday. You're going to get rocked, girl. It's a full chapter content. On your whiteboard, how many items can your memory, short term memory hold? No, you need numbers. Some of you are wrong. What is it? Oh. Alex? Seven plus or minus three. Seven plus or minus three. Some textbooks say three, some say two. Your textbook says two, but the Myers textbook says three. So as long as you're in that region, you're fine. On your whiteboard, please tell me what are the two nicknames for short-term memory? Oh. Good. What is it, Gabriella? Do you go by a different name too, Gabriella? Good. Me too. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is it called when you add information into something like instead of just remembering 1492, I say in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. What a courageous thing to do. But someone was already there. The U.S. of Cherokee. They all sing. Oh, we all want. Yeah, there's a whole song. What is it? Sophia. A laborative rehearsal. Wait, that one being that one being no. mnemonic device. It, it is. Mnemonic device is the overarching thing, but elaborative is when you add information uh, to it. Where even is that on her thing? It's on the focus. Oh, okay. <laughs> on your whiteboard, please tell me. No, we're going here. All right, here we go. Okay. We got a lot to do. We've got a total of like 50 slides and we're on 20. Holy, oh. holy moly is correct. Do we need to write in on your study guide your memories? Is that what we need to do, your different type of memories? Yes. It's important that you are writing your own memories using, basing them off examples of my own, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so just don't write exactly my examples. Using your own memories as an example will be much more rewarding and effective. So procedural are learning how to do something and simplify it, uh, once you master it, you don't have to think about it. Like brushing my teeth this morning, I was thinking about all the things I need to pick up at Fresh Market because for some reason I decided to have a dinner party on a Thursday. No, it's not. I have to come to school on Friday and I have to prep for dinner and I'd like to go to the gym. Oh, and it's test day and I like to have all my grades in and it's stressful. So during brushing teeth, I was thinking about my dinner party and how stupid I am. Did you change the date? No, I told McCray. I was like, McCray, I really don't want to have the dinner party. I... And he was like, no, I think it's fine. <coughs> Guess who's the one organizing and cleaning and doing Why the dinner party? Because McCray Bennett is... But he has an event. You can't tell him huh? change the date. I know, it's so annoying. All right, we done with declarative two? All right, andrograde amnesia is a loss of memory from the point of injury or trauma forward. This is somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> if it's not, you need to write it down because there is an example on your test. Is it on your focus? No. Okay. Andrew, great amnesia <coughs> is 
From the moment I get it, I can't recall all new information. This is 51st Dates. This is 51st Dates. Obviously, can we agree it's not that extreme that it resets every day? That is so stupid. Makes a good, entertaining movie, but it is not real life, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry if that disappoints you. So, Andrew Great Amnesia is when you can't, uh, you lose all your memory and you have the inability, no, you don't lose your memory, you have the inability to form new long term memories. So, every day I will meet Coker and I will introduce myself. However, Coker, uh, if I have Andrew Great Amnesia, I will still know how to drive a car and do all the procedural stuff, which is pretty cool. So, this is 51st Dates. No new information. Long-term new information. I can still go to the grocery store and remember my seven items that I need to pick up for my stupid dinner party that I don't want to do. And now tonight I'm going to clean. That's annoying. Because I cleaned on Sunday, and now I'm going to clean tonight because I don't have time tomorrow to do it all. Alyssa, <sighs> did you have a question? You just did? <coughs> nice. All right, so implicit memory is not an easy brought into conscious thing. Fine. Okay, declarative. All things that people know are semantic memories. These are types of declarative that are your general knowledge. Hopefully my little tree that we did yesterday together, my little chart, helped, yes? Okay, good. So this is all your facts, general knowledge, and other things. Um, are you any of you people trivia people? If you're good at trivia knowledge, then you have good semantic memories, ladies and gentlemen. I am not very good at trivia. I'm actually pretty terrible at it. It's fine. I'm not talented at a lot of things. Episodic are types of declarative memory that are all your personal information. So your first kiss, your first date, your... I don't know. What else would be an episodic thing? You write in the sand? Yeah, I already have. A uh, gift, sure. What's something I don't have on my board? The bell out? You, that was a traumatic day for you, huh? Huh? Remembering, like, the first, like, Yes, I've done that four times. It's kind of hard to remember which one was first. Uh, wait. What? Um, for short-term memory, it says plus or minus two. You fell out of a tree? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You fell out of a tree? Oh my god, what the hell were you doing on a tree? My mom said, so Do you like, remember I was climbing it, and my mom was like, ready to catch me. And then she just and like, ha, ha, ha. I thought I was like, super bring out of Cape Punch, she said, and then I jumped like, the complete opposite way where she was. And then, and then I kept trying to like, swim with it on, and so I learned how to swim again. You sound like a real delight. <laughs> well, like, it says seven minus two <clears throat> items. Yes. For short term memory, it's, it's three. It's really. It's either or. Two or three, it doesn't really matter. Oh. Alright, what? So episodic, like, I don't know, write down like a good memory for you. Like when you think back, like maybe like your, I don't know, what? Christmas Day, do you have good memories from Christmas Day for all you Christians out there? Well, One of my favorite holidays, huh? Even if you're not Christian, I just don't have a lot of people Really? Doesn't everybody celebrate Christmas? Yeah. No. Not I, everybody. No, I had a large Jewish population where I grew up, and they did not do it. What do you? What do you? Hanukkah. Yes, but Hanukkah is not their biggest holiday. Yeah, it's like. Uh, do you? Rosh Hashanah. Do you celebrate Christmas? I do, I but it's not my favorite holiday. What? That's yes, definitely, yeah, definitely my favorite holiday. You got a pony? Yeah. Oh, I see. It's like a pet. Like for a day, like oh, I've jobs. never been on a horse. I got a horse this for like, Christmas two years ago. Ever. It was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've never been on a horse. All right, so your semantic network model. Is this on your study guide somewhere? Yes. What up, Jackson? Are you looking for a quiz? Yeah. It's in the binary already. Help yourself. So it's a model of memory organization that assumes information is stored in the brain in a connected fashion. The concepts. This is not on the front page of your study guide? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Write it down. Yeah. So, semantic network model or semantic encoding is that information is connected. So, uh, Olivia, what were you into as like a little kid? Were you like a uh, dinosaur kid? Were you an uh, insect kid? What are you? Dolls. Like American Girl doll kind of dolls? Hell yes. Which ones did you have? I don't know, Ivy. Uh, Who's she? She's like, she's kind of Okay, so, what is she? Like, what age? She's like 14. 
She's Chinese. That's pretty cool. Does she live in America or is she? She's an she... artist, but she lives in France. This is very culturally diverse. <laughs> American girl. What is the problem? Grab the binder. Yes, I got the thing. You grab the thing. Grab a ten-question quiz sheet. Take the quiz. Put it in the drop-off box. Oh no! See, all I needed was Kristen, the uh, the Danish girl. She looked like me, except she has braided hair, and we all know I can't do it, so it's fine. <laughs> Okay, so all of your knowledge of American Girl Dolls. See, we're bonding over this because I got, my sister had Abby, which I thought was really cool. She's the former slave who goes through the underground uh, railroad and all that stuff. She gets out. That's a pretty cool one. Obviously, my girl Samantha was my number one. I also really enjoyed Molly. Okay, the whole World War II thing. Loved it. They have little books. So now all of our information is coming out. Did you have all their outfits too? Yeah. Oh, my God, you rich kids. I had the outfit that came in, and my mom used to make me their clothes. But she's a terrible seamstress. I have the same talent, so it's no judgment, but my American girls always looked homeless. <laughs> <laughs> they would buy the dolls, which is so wonderful, because they're expensive. They're like 150 bucks for the dolls, which is very kind. So I always got the dolls, but my mom was like, nay, nay, we're not buying you any of the real stuff. So if it didn't come in the original box, I didn't own it. It's fine. I still have them. They're in my uh, storage unit at my house. I can bust them out if you need to because uh, I have them and I will never throw them away because I love them. Anyway, um, so all the information we're just talking about. Who here has no idea what the hell we are talking about? Everyone knows? Oh, look. Okay. So the fact, can you go into all the depths? I can talk about Molly's sister. I can talk about all the wartime effort Molly's things did. I can talk about Nellie, who is Sam's best friend, who is the poor cleaner. Yeah. Okay. I got all this stuff. This is all semantic memory. Once I start on one American girl, I can start on the others. Yes. So for applications. Yeah, the slides was better than all, like, 21. So. <laughs> so a connection. So. If you're passionate about insects, talking about a fly can get you talking about a butterfly. can get you talking about moths that can talk about <laughs> Venus fly traps and then your death. I don't know. I don't do bugs. So it's how we do all of your kingdoms. You know in biology you learn about kingdoms, like you have a reptile kingdom, don't you? Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. Hello? Reptilia. But don't you have, like, what are they called when you have little groups of animals, like mammals? Uh, They're kingdoms, are they kingdoms? Kingdom domain, domain, domain range, kingdom yes. phylum. Wait, wait, I remember saying you miles, I figured out the order. Range is like domain. It's like the job Guys, I'm just letting you know, this will never come up in real life. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, bye, Jackson. So, retrieval cues are stimulus for remembering. This is somewhere. Retrieval, retrieval cues, yes? Is it on your focus? It has retrieval, not Okay, so. Thank you, Lauren. Oh, wait, just say, yeah. So, if I'm trying to get you to, where is it, Sophia? It's on the first page, retrieval. Oh, okay, well, retrieval is not the same as retrieval cue. Retrieval is getting information from long term to short term. So, retrieval cue is just a little hint, a little wink, and a little nod to get you to remember something. I use them all the time to try to help you remember if I'm not annoyed. I do it all the time in AP World, especially when I'm annoyed. Encoding specificity, uh, specificity is a tendency for a memory to, of information to be improved if related to other information. Have you noticed, um, specifically in AP World, did you take AP Art last year, yeah. Lauren? Art. Art history? Art history, yeah. yeah. Did you like how they kind of tied together? This year, Ren and I are in the same exact place at all times, which is pretty bad. I felt like we were always ahead, so like when we did the art history stuff, I actually but, I mean, it's helpful, correct? Yeah. And that's what encoding specificity is, is that the, when two things come together. How nice is it when in one class you're talking about something and in another class you're referring back to it? It's so wonderful, and that happens all the time to uh, AP World kids. All right, so state-dependent learning is that when you're in a specific spot, you remember content easier. Like, for instance, when you're sitting in AP Psych, it's easier to remember AP Psych. But if you're sitting in AP Bio... And you start thinking about AP Psych, is it easy to recall? No, absolutely not. Like when you're sitting in your bedroom, is it easy to think about AP Psych? No, all I do is think about nap time. Okay? So those different types of things, uh, stuff like that. So recall, this has to be on your study guide somewhere, yes? Oh, my God. 
What the hell is on your damn thing? I don't know. This is Jacqueline's fault. Did you see I didn't even know that Jacqueline existed, but now I do. Alright, so recall is a type of memory retrieval in which it must be pulled out of you. So, Katrina, who was your first crush? Just give me the first name. You don't have to give me the last name. You don't know you had so many in your life that you just like live life like that? I feel like that was made up. Is that no, true? <laughs> there you go. All right, so Samuel was her first love. Uh, were you uh, ready for me to ask you that question? No. No, you were kind of like, ah. When you have to recall something, you're like stopping and you're thinking. What was the first week of content I taught you? Psychology. Uh, introduction. Theory. Oh, it's all okay. psychology. Intro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> William. There you go. Wounded. Wounded. All that stuff. It's kind of like you have to stop and you have to like pluck it out. Okay, that's recall. When you have retrieval failure, your recall cannot occur. It's when you go, ah, ah, and it like hurts. You know what I mean? Like it physically hurts. Who is the third president of the United States? There you go. That's true. That's true. Yes, I, I know that. <laughs> you know when you said like the different I know that. fit in with each other? Oh, yeah. So like, do they? Do oh, that's so. Like, how often do I ask you about presidents here? I mean, you've been asking them a lot. Lately, like, like memory. You brought up your your teacher that you used to teach in chronological <laughs> order or whatever Murphy? based on um uh -huh. on South Dakota. Yeah. 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 Well, no, but the. She did a chronological order based on like presidents or something. Yeah. That's Jay Bush, what a terrible way to do it. All right, here we go. So retrieval. My girl Sierra is bored over here. <laughs> Pull that phone. It's fine. Olivia was doing it earlier. You rebels. Okay, so retrieval area. Uh, retrieval failure is when you're like, ah, and you're like, I know it, but I can't get it. I know it. That's called tip of tongue. Tip of tongue is on there somewhere. That's a big one. You do need that. Write that down somewhere. When you literally know something, like when you come, like, for instance, um, my faculty members, I don't know their name. <laughs> but I know I should know them, and I know I've heard them. I would take a quick little note about it, people. You need tip of tongue. Um, Can I cross out, like, refreshing and writing? It's a retrieval failure, huh? Can I cross out, like, a word and substitute it? No. We literally have so many words that we haven't even thought I know. We're going. We're, like, halfway through the PowerPoint. So recall, serial position effect is on there. Sure. No. Yes, it is. Yes! Yes, I am sure. Okay, so serial position effect is the tendency of information at the beginning and the end of a body of information to be remembered more accurately than the information in the middle. So, for instance, if your mom gives you a grocery list or the grocery list I need today, I need squash, zucchini, uh, lemons. I need butter. We're out of butter in the Bennett household, which is not that uncommon, but we don't use butter like at all. So the fact that we're out of butter is weird because butter can stay for a very long time. Anyway, you don't care. <laughs> I also need uh, four chicken breasts. I also need um, garlic. Did I say garlic? I need to get salad. I like the mix between romaine and sweet baby lettuce, personal fave, sweet baby. tomato, onions for the salad, and then, yeah, that's it. I know, right? What was the first thing I said to you? Oh. Yes! What was the last thing I said to you? Oh, wait, no, that was June. <laughs> June! Uh, wait, what you just said? Yeah. Um, I guess! Yes! Okay, if I stop and make a little quote, a little story about it, it makes it easy to remember. So, if your parents send you a list with a very generic list, you're going to remember the beginning and the end, unless you write it down, of course. Primacy effect is when you only remember things at the very beginning, if you don't remember anything at the end. Recency effect is when you only remember things at the end, and you don't remember anything at the beginning. Ooh. All right, are we good? Cool. All right, so recognition. You've got
got to be kidding me. On the front page? It is not. No. This is so nice. It's fine. Is the ability to match a piece of information to a stimulus uh, to a stored image or fact that you recognize someone? False positive is an error of recognition in which people think they recognize something when they, in fact, don't. Doesn't that happen to you all the time? False memory. Uh, yes. Yes. False memory, yeah, that would be a substitute. Okay, so false memories is that, like, you're like, oh, my God, I totally met you, and you're like, no, I've never met you a day in my life, Jacqueline. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, my God, uh, no, we've totally met. I kind of scared that I was pronouncing your name wrong in the first couple of weeks. Oh, my God, I hate every single one of you. All of you are accomplices, uh, accomplices and I think uh, this whole class has been built online. Jacqueline. Fake news. Not, no, you're at the top of the list, Rookie. Don't you forget your place. Shady. 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 It wasn't cheating because I would have lost my mind, but it was real shady. Still annoyed about it. Still bring it up on a regular basis. This is who I am as a person. Caddy. Wait, wait, wait. Don't move it. So you're making his life like... Huh? So you're not... You're not making his life like that bad at all. Because he wasn't cheating, I don't think. Because if I don't have proof, I'm not going to lose oh, my mind. Oh, when someone cheated, cheated and then, like, I believe him. They stayed in your class, and even though you, like, you treated them so bad, weren't they, like, 100% everything? Did they, like, finish you with an A, or you find them like No, I'm not going to sabotage them that way, but I am, like, relentless. Really? She's scared of shit out Yes! You made a good car the world of these comments. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, you're getting scared? That's your word. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Automatic encoding! Why did you We don't have it, no. That's a no. <laughs> How do you know? Look! There's like multiple pages! <laughs> <laughs> How do we not have Miss Bennett, process. why did you move McKinnon? Because I need this seat. And I really don't want to sit there anymore. Trey sits there. No. Okay. Automatic encoding is when information from a long-term memory just gets right into your memory really quick. What is something that you have in your long-term memory, and you're like, why the hell is it there? Um. No, oh, that's kind of like people worked on that one. What is something that you have in your long-term memory that you're just like, damn it? Why? Well, you mean just like a dumb fact that we know? Like a dumb thing. Like for instance, there's a kid named Patrick Kumpf who I went from first grade with all the way to my senior year of high school. Like, he didn't graduate because I moved I to Florida. And, like, this kid used to just sing this stupid song on a regular basis from, like, first grade all the way through 11th grade. And it used yeah. to just piss me off. Why am I retaining this almost 15 years after? Why? Because you're singing so bad. I hate it. Patrick Comp, I hate that kid. <laughs> Algebra. <laughs> Automatic encoding is when something gets in your long-term memory and you're like, why the hell? Like, have you ever had a weird memory and you're just like, why would I remember that? Like, for one reason, I remember jumping into my mom's vin minivan. Me, my brother, my sister, and a couple of our friends, like our childhood friends like we grew up with. And I remember singing in sync, bye, 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 at the top of my lungs, like on five times on repeat. And everyone was just dancing, doing the moves, because I came out that summer. And we were just losing our mind. Why do I have that memory? I have no idea. But it makes me laugh every time. I think you're having fun. Like, it was a good time, man. <laughs> it was a good time. Flashbulb memory. No. no. Don't say that to me. Uh, no. It's, it's got to be on your, are we checking your focus, too? No. Yes. It's uh, not <laughs> Flashbulb memories are types of automatic encoding that occurs because of an unexpected event. A flashbulb memory is when you have way more detail than typical memories. I have one of my September 11th experience. I was a sophomore in high school when uh, the planes hit the tower. It happened at 7.33 was the first one. Everyone, no one really knew if it was on purpose. And then when the second one hit at like 8.35, then we all knew it was a terrorist attack, of course. Um, actually, this is the strangest thing. So I was walking through the science wing of my school, and my brother, who's a senior in high school, no, I was a freshman, shit. I was a freshman in high school, my brother was a senior in high school. But my high school was like, oh my god, have you heard? No. This is like period two, no. And he's like, we're under attack. 
I'm sorry, what? And he's like, come with me. So we went to the pool where my brother and I worked. I used to teach swim lessons. <laughs> anyway, so we went to the pool and we turned on the TV because all the teachers were told not to turn on the TVs. Don't turn on the TVs. Even though half the school did turn on TVs because it's like, how do you not watch this? Anyway, so we went there and like, no, no, no. He said, no, 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 no. I saw the first, see, this is not a very good expl explanation of my flashball memory, but it's true. So he came and he saw me walking in between class, and he's like, oh, my God, have you seen uh, the Twin Towers? Got, one of them got hit. Like, holy crap, have you seen it? No. We got there at 8.33, and I happened to see the plane hit at 8.35 on live television. And I saw the plane hit, and that was just insane watching it hit live and I was like holy crap so like we I walked to class like 30 minutes late got in trouble of course I can tell you exactly what I was wearing it was super cool it was bell bottom tight pants because it was really cool at the time and I was wearing a long sleeve soccer shirt so you know I am the same person um long sleeve varsity soccer shirt that I had until like four years ago it was just like so tattered it was time to get rid of it uh, I was wearing my black sambas the black Adidas shoes with the white stripes. Yes. And my hair was here in a knot. And my brother was wearing this terrible Abercrombie shirt that he still wore until like five years ago, too. And he was wearing his stupid skater shoes. By the way, my brother has no talent just like me, and he was not a skater boy. And then I remember we go to class, and teachers were not allowed to turn on the television. You're not allowed to talk about it, not allowed to look at it. None of my teachers watched it which was so annoying. I remember being upset at the end of the day. Principal Bricado, who was my principal at my high school, never <laughs> mentioned it on the afternoon news. Like in the like, you know, uh, afternoon announcements before the semester, never mentioned it. No. Nope. We walked out and people were, I remember walking out of school and this girl was like hysterically crying and she's like, I, my dad's office is in New York. My dad's office is in New York. The town I live in, um, it was an upper middle class town, and a lot of my family, my friends, my family friends are pilots. Like, you could see the skyline of Boston from my bedroom, and the planes took out of Boston. So a lot of the people on those planes were people from Massachusetts and people we knew. Um, and a lot of them weren't, but some of them were. And I remember going to soccer practice, and the game was canceled that day. And the flag was still at full mast that day. And one of um, me and a couple of the dads were like, we gotta lower the, we gotta lower the flag. So I went and we lowered the flag and then I went home and for the first time I really watched what was happening in the world. And it was the craziest thing, just watching people walk covered in gray ash. I mean, that's flesh and bodies that have just been incinerated that these people are breathing in. It's building materials these people are building and just like walking in I also have a flashbulb memory of like four days later there was a documentary that people were recording while going in it was like a, I guess it was two weeks later people there was a film crew following one of the fire stations that happened to be filming the day of September 11th so the whole documentary ended up shifting just about September 11th and the guy walks in and he's following this whole crew and the whole time you keep hearing bang 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 and it's people jumping from like the top tiers of the the towers and they didn't explain them and I just remember sitting there just like crying just like oh my god and that's the thing that's a flashbulb memory when you know what you are where you are what you're doing how things work how things interact that's a flashbulb memory I hope ladies and gentlemen that you do not have one like that however times are strange I hope transitioning a little roughly I hope you are paying attention to what's happening on the news. Yesterday, the United States, for the first time since the 1950s Cold War, we now have B-52s armed, fueled, and ready to go at every major um, Air Force base and naval base in the United States and around the world. For the first time since the Cold War, which means... The United States is armed and ready for an attack if it happens. That is terrifying. Never in my life has that happened. Only when my parents and your parents were 10 years old. Maybe your parents weren't even born since that's happened. I hope nothing comes out of this whole North Korea thing. Whatever your political opinions are on Trump. I mean, it's a weird situation. No other president's been forced to have... You know, another president shooting IBMs over a country like they are doing to Japan. I mean, could you imagine being in Japan right now? 
you're literally holding your breath. United States here, we're kind of just starting this whole process. You need to be listening, you need to be following along, because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, if World War III happens, which I'm not saying it is, because who knows what's going to happen, guess who's going to be enlisted and drafted, ladies and gentlemen? That is you. And ladies, I don't think you'll be safe from a draft. Because we cannot demand equality if we're not willing to pay the same price. Can we agree? So, World War III happens, which I'm not saying it is, so please don't go home and say, Oh my God, Miss Bennett thinks the world's going to end tomorrow. That's not what I'm saying, but there's a lot of things happening in the world that you need to be aware of. So, constructive processing. How much time do I have? One, zero minutes. Hindsight bias is definitely on there. No. Oh my god! You're off today. I am off today. Goodbye!